Good morning. Good morning. Today we are in Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga, we're going to continue with our series of knees. So we're going to get a little bit more into the knees today. So I'm asking everybody to bring a uh, foam roller if you have one at home. If you don't, no stress at all. We'll just have two blankets, two blocks and a strap, um, or a blanket, a foam roller, blocks, and a strap. So you decide what you need. And let's get started. So allowing yourself to find a posture that feels really nice to you. Allowing yourself to drop in, perhaps even closing your eyes. And just tiptoe towards that breath. And just notice what it's doing here today. How's it moving? Does it feel deep? Does it feel shallow? Do you find yourself putting a pause? somewhere in the cycle. Just watch the flow of your breath. Do you have a tendency to hold the breath somewhere? Do you hold it after the inhale? Or do you hold it after the exhale? So you're challenging yourself not to do good breathing. Not yet, we're just watching the way we're breathing. We're just watching the way it flows. Now bring your attention to the back side of you and see if you can challenge the breath to move into the lungs and the back side of you. Deep breaths back there. Start to create that samavriti, that equal breathing pattern. Almost as if you're sitting against a wall and you're pushing into the back side of the wall. Stretching out those inhales and stretching out those exhales. Just welcome yourself to your mat. Welcome yourself to your practice, to these tools that you know about, these breathing tools and these movement tools and this quieting of your mind, this introspective quality of the practice. Perhaps even splashing the breath into the ribs now, into the side body as well, back body, side body. And beginning, if you haven't already, to create that rhythm where that inhale and exhale are the same length. And we'll take a minute here and just start to settle into our mantra. What brings you to the mat today? What are you showing up with in your physical body? What are you showing up in your mental body? What's on your mind today? What's on your emotional body? What's on your heart? So taking a little over a minute, where are you now and what are you leaning in towards? for an hour from now? What are you trying to lean towards becoming? So we'll spend a minute here just settling into the intention. What brings you to the mat today?
starting to settle it into a one or two word phrase, something you can repeat to yourself if you're finding yourself distracted or challenged. <clears throat> And when you have your intention, when you have your intention, let's bring our hands together into prayer position, thumbs against the heart. Repeat that mantra a couple of times to yourself. And gently bow the chin. Open your eyes, see your fingertips, remember the promise that you've made, and release the hands down. Awesome. Okay, so Hatha class, so this is we uh, sun and moon opposites. So we're going to play with our knees. We're going to be moving slowly, but dynamically. So here's a foam roller. If you don't have a foam roller, no stress at all. You could use a, ba um, a bath towel or a, another blanket, or however you want to do it. And if you don't have either one of those handy, you can use the blocks. They're just a little bit more pokey. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sit up and find Dandasana, staff pose. So you're sitting right on the edge of your blanket. And remember, the reason that we sit on the blanket is so that our pelvic bowl is level. If you have a hard time sitting up straight, then the back is not in, in its integrity. So coming to the very edge of that um, blanket is keeping that pelvis nice and level. And we're going to take the uh, foam roller or the other blanket underneath our knees. Okay, and we're going to just double check that our toes are turned on towards the kneecaps. The knee joint is asking questions of the hip and the foot and ankle. So if something's happening in the hip, it happens in the knee. If something's happening in the feet and the ankle, it happens in the knee. So that knee is the bridge between these two and we wanna double check that we have integrity in both, okay? So one of the ways, the easiest way that you can really find integrity in the knees is to double check that your ankles are flexed and that the toenails are looking towards that kneecap. This is like a pulleying system and it really fires up those kneecaps, okay? Keeping the integrity. The shin bone wants to line up with the thigh bone. And so we've talked before, Every time we move, we want to make sure we're moving from the hip and not the lower leg. So this whole idea is it's the chain, okay? All right, so here we are. We're going to sit up nice and tall, Dandasana. And if you feel like you need to have blocks next to you to put your hands on, then do so. All right, legs out straight. Foam roller underneath your knees. Sitting up nice and tall, you can use the blankets there if that feels, I mean, the blocks out to the side, if that feels nice and uh, serving to you. Otherwise, just take the hands to the floor. And now we're going to activate pulling up the quad. So feel yourself activating those quadriceps, really lifting. If we were to poke them, they'd be strong and then release. Let those ankles flop. And then fire it up again, really engaging those muscles, pulling them in and release. Watch your feet move. And if you have pants on and you can move them to be able to see your knees even better and relax, just keep playing with that and relax. Three more. See if you can feel yourself engaging and two and one. Are you turning those second, third toes, aiming right at the knees? and release, okay? Remove that foam roller or blanket, and now we're gonna do it on the floor. If you feel like you hyperextend or you overdo it, then put a smaller roll, less roll, or a little pillow so it's not quite as high, but you still have that integrity, okay? We're gonna do the same thing again. Legs are floppy, and then we engage, pulling up, and relax. You could even put your hands above the knees and feel that action. Pulling up and release. Pulling up and release. Oftentimes we have more strength on the outer knees and a little bit more weakness on the inner knees. And that's why these knees get, get off track quite often. So we really want to engage this inner leg 
and engage, imagine that you're zipping up from the arches of the feet to the pelvic floor. About five more, engaging, release, engaging, and release, engaging, and release. This pose looks so easy, Dandasana, staff pose. It looks challenging pose to hold. You wanna try it, you wanna hold it? We're gonna hold it, okay? Three more, relax. Engaging, feel those quads turning on. Release, two, engaging, and release. Last one, we're gonna hold it, ready? Fire it up, toes looking towards your kneecap, really lifting those quads, sitting up nice and tall, and we'll hold. Feel those legs. Three. And two. And very nice, let it flop. Let's bend the left knee, put the foot on the floor. Take your left hand to the outer shin and the right hand to the inner thigh. Left hand, outer shin, right hand, inner thigh. And now gently push the thigh away from you and push the shin towards you. Okay, sitting up nice and tall, keeping that fired leg on the right side. We're gonna hold it here. So feeling that integrity as you're pushing in. You're pushing in and pushing out, really hugging it, hugging it in. We'll spend five breaths here. Double check, but you've got space behind that knee. You're not bringing the heel so close to your bottom that you're really crunching on that knee. There's a nice little space back there. And four. Them bones, them bones, them beef bones. Big, juicy ribs. Remember that commercial? Good. And release. Relax. A lot of times with, uh, as we get older or we don't have enough strength on that inner leg, what happens is we turn really quickly and we can torque it. So just keeping the sense that we have this engagement will help it keep tracking. Okay, left hand on the inner uh, thigh, right hand on the outer shin. Our right knee is bent, sitting up nice and tall, firing up this left leg. Again, if you're hyperextending here, put a little wash rag or something underneath there so that you're not overdoing it, right? You don't want to be buckling or locking ever, ever, ever. Here we go. Five breaths, pushing the thigh away from you and hugging the shin in. Feel yourself turning on, literally turning your body on. Feel that action. Three. Feeling yourself pushing the thigh away, squeezing that shin in. One more deep, deep breath. And beautiful release. Okay. Just let it wobble around. All right. Dandasana again. Here we go. Sitting up nice and tall. Firing it up. Take your hands, the inner, uh, the hands on the inner thigh. As you're fired up in those mountain legs, you're going to be trying to press your thighs apart and squeeze those shins together. Here we go. Five deep breaths. Very strong engagement here. Mountain legs. Three. Zipping it up from the arches of the feet all the way to the pelvic floor, two. And one, very good. We're gonna do one more round and then we're gonna take it to standing. So take yourself off your blanket and we're gonna take our foam roller or our blanket under our knees again. And the other blanket we don't need. So here we are, we have our hands under, I mean our, our uh, roll underneath our knees. We're gonna come down to our elbows here. Okay, come down to our elbows and allow the heels to be on the floor and let yourself go into a floppy level. 
Most of us will notice one leg turns out a lot more than the other. Just notice what you typically want to do and then find level. Find the second, third toe looking at the kneecap. Okay. And all we're going to do here is on this right leg, engage that quad, lift the heel and relax. Okay. Again, right heel up and bend and up. And Ben, just watch. Man, that's a good looking leg. Look at your good looking leg as it's moving so perfectly. Just feel yourself really turning on. Do you feel a sense of imbalance at all? Do you feel that your inner thigh is engaging your inner knee? Do you see how that feels? Do you see how that feels? Keep going with the right leg. We're just going about eight more times. Let it relax. Let it engage. Pulling up those quads. I don't know if this is true, but I have heard this from several folks that uh, in yoga, some of the most common tears are these inner knees. We know that. But a lot of times they're saying that the left knee is the most common injury. And typically it's because we are doing everything on the right leg first. And then when we do the left leg, whether we're going into Lotus or Virasana or any of those poses, we're not keeping that same alignment because we're sort of like slapping the second round together. So keeping, I don't know if that's true, but keeping that integrity on both legs, most of the time in sequencing, you always do your right leg first. I don't know if you know that. So that's why. Three, engage. Two, and engage. Relax. So maybe for you, you would change the balance. You wouldn't always start with the right leg. Maybe in your home practice, you can be doing something on the other side first. Okay, so here we go. Left leg. Pick up that heel, engage and drop. We did about 20. Let's do about 20 on this side too. And just feel those beautiful muscles turning on. How's your breath? <sighs> And as you're doing these kinds of exercises and you're watching the way you move and you're building integrity, notice that you're sending loving thoughts to yourself. Sometimes we're just looking for that criticism or that negative stance. I say grow flowers, not weeds. Notice the part of it that's really kind or strong. Or productive. About eight more. And three. And two. And one. Good. Relax, flipper flopper out, okay? We're gonna come up, we're gonna sit up nice and tall. We're gonna take one of our handy dandy blocks and we're gonna put it between our shins and we won't need our foam roller, probably I don't think it at all going forward. And I know that when I go on my back, I gotta move my little mic. All right, we're coming to our back here with our feet in the air and we're really firing up those toes. So again, you're gonna notice maybe that you bring your heels together. We wanna to keep ourselves nice and hip distance apart. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Elbows are nice and wide. We're gonna do what we call the doozy twos. Take a big inhale. Exhale, lift up the head and shoulders. Stay up there, big inhale through the back. And exhale, lift up the hips. Stay there. And exhale, head down and hips down. Let's do nine more. Hips and head, head and hips. Hips and head, head 
and the hips. Breathing is calm. Watch those legs really turned on. Just isolating our hips lift and then the head and shoulders. The head and shoulders goes down, hips stay up and then the hips drop. Four more up. Last one, up we go. And we're gonna hold it here. Squeeze that block, hold it. Keep those toes right over the knee. One more deep breath. And gently head down and knees down and move the block. Beautiful. <sighs> How was that? All right, now we're gonna take ourselves over to the side and we're gonna come to downward dog. We're just gonna skip being on the knees today. So coming up to downward dog, finding a graceful way to do that. And as we pedal out the dog, notice again that tracking of the kneecap staying right over that second, third toe. Adha Mukha Svanasana. Now here we are, we're feeling those shins pulling together and the thighs squeezing apart. Thighs pulling apart, shins squeezing together. Feel that line. Two more deep breaths. Beautiful, let's walk ourselves forward here, coming forward, forward, forward. And if you need to bend the knees here to be comfortable, feel free to bend the knees. We're gonna hang in Uttanasana, forward fold for 12 breaths. This is a long hold here. This Hatha class, this opposite, we get to take our time. You can play with taking your hands to the outsides of your shins. You could take them to the inner thighs. You could squeeze the shins together and imagine you're spreading the thighs apart. You can do whatever you want. You could hook your peace fingers around the big toes. Some of you may wanna take yoga mudra where you're interlacing the fingers up and over the head. <sighs> Notice where you're uncomfortable and send your loving energy there. Okay, we're gonna take a little break, but we're gonna come back. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Now, as I said at the beginning, part of what happens with the knees is what happens in the hips and the ankles. So I want you to check in on your feet right now. Most of us have all of our weight in our heels, which is locking to the knees. So find yourself shifting forward, lift up all 10 toes, find the ball mounds of those toes, big toe, pinky toe, really feel the front of the foot, the arches are lifting, and the front of the heel. Take a long spine here, keeping the front of the feet active, start to forward fold again, eight more breaths. You could feel those shins pulling together, thighs pulling apart. Quadriceps are active. We're lifting the kneecaps here. Again, if bending the knees serves you best, feel free to do that. Mm. 
Whatever you want to do with your arms, grabbing opposite elbows, wrapping around the legs and grabbing the shins. Keep that idea that you have that three prong foot, the big toe, the pinky toe, and the front of your heel. Don't you just love yoga? I love yoga. I just love it. I love feeling my body, even when it's tight. It's this beautiful body in movement. Two more deep breaths. And gently bend the knees, come halfway up, just transitioning slowly, and then come all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And beautiful, come on to center. So what's so great is that when we watch our resistance in a pose or we watch our body really um, not want to let go, which I guess is resistance, practicing it in the physical body, that is how you practice it in the mental body. So what you practice here of like, oh, I'm really tight. I'm really holding back here. I'm going to breathe it out. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to release it. I'm going to see that there's not only this truth, but there's more truths that I can go a little further. I can be a little bit stronger. That's exactly how we do it when we meditate. We notice the thought patterns want to go away. We notice the body wants to go away. And when you watch the thought pattern, that's not the only way to think about it. You're able to see it differently. So we practice it in the most uh, tangible way of thinking in the physical body, but then we can get deeper into the meditative body or into the breath body. And so it's a, it's a beautiful practice of unfolding. They call it the onion unraveling. Okay, left toes out, right toes in, nice and tall here. How, fighter, how far are your feet? About as far as your wrists. So if we extend our arms out, this is about how wide our ankles are. Now we wanna double check that that kneecap is always and forever over that second, third toe and this, um, both knees, okay? So very, very important here. All right, we're gonna take ourselves into triangle pose, but we're gonna build it slowly. Bend that knee, can you see your big toe, and then straighten. We did a little bit of this on the Monday class. Bend the knee and straighten. Bend the knee and straighten. And bend the knee. Now, take that heel up, find that front prong. Remember what happens with the knee is the positioning of that foot. So we're taking care of the knee by taking care of this foot alignment. Find that prong, put the front of the heel down, and then begin to straighten the knee. But before you go all the way to straighten it, can you imagine that your shin bone is still moving forward? Your shin bone still moving forward as you start to straighten that knee. We're gonna do this a couple times. Just hold here and feel this pulling forward of the shin. Two more deep breaths. We're not in our full extension here. We're taking our time. Good, bend the knee and come on out. Close the hip from the top, right? That chain, and then open the hip from the second side, okay? Same thing, bend the knee and straighten. See if you can see that big toe. Bend the knee and straighten. Bend the knee and straighten. So again, this inner knee is where a lot of injuries occur because there's a weakness here. So we're learning how to activate those muscles in a balanced way. Here we go. We're going to bend the knee. We're going to lift the heel so that we can find the front of the foot. Find that front. Keeping that, those toes lifted. Put the heel down the front of the heel and start to straighten without losing that big toe action. And we'll do that a couple times. Okay, here we go. Find it, shin bone moving forward, shin bone moving forward, thigh bone moving back, shin bone moving forward. Keep going, two or three more rounds of breath. Again, we don't need to go to full triangle yet. We're getting there. Patience. Find that action, very engaging. One more deep breath. Beautiful, come on up and we'll close that hip. Okay, we're gonna 
Walk, 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 and pause. Okay, we're gonna go back there, but first we're gonna get our blocks. Some of you like having the blocks for triangle. We're gonna place them for the right side. I'm gonna mirror you, so I'll go to this side. Okay, and we're gonna do, oh, so we're gonna to go to chair pose first. So here we are, we're gonna have our feet hip distance apart. We're gonna take our hands into prayer and we're gonna sit down as low as we can go. Some of you will be able to touch the floor. And again, you're looking at the alignment of those feet. Those toes are up. You've got the front prongs. You've got that uh, front of that heel. You can see all 10 of your toes because your bottom is far enough back that you can actually see what's up. What's up? Okay. All right, we're gonna hold here. Imagine the thighs are dropping and you're telescoping up. Imagine the thighs are moving away, but the shins are hugging in. Can you feel that? Shins squeezing together, thighs spreading apart, tracking out these gorgeous little knees. Four. And three, smile. And two, and up we go, and pause. All right, that's what we're focusing on. All right, right toes out, left toes in, tracking those knees, hands on your hip. Imagine those thighs are spreading apart, but the shins are hugging in, the heels are hugging in. So again, why? Tracking out those knees. All right, here we go. Arms out nice and wide. Put a soft bend on your right knee here. Put a little bit of a soft bend. Pick up that right heel. Find the front prong of those toes. Put that heel down. Imagine the shin is moving forward as the thigh is moving back. Shin is moving forward as the thigh is moving back. You can take your hand to the block or to the shin, shin moving forward, and then maybe even taking yourself up. Do you feel it in the Achilles? Do you feel it in the back of the knee, the side of the knee? Put a soft bend there. We don't wanna overdo it. Keep those toes engaged if that helps you. Just play, 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 play. Two more deep breaths. Good, take your block with you, soft bend on the knee, come on up, close it from the top of the hip and we'll open the left. Same thing here. Arms open nice and wide. Put a soft bend on that right, uh, left knee. Pick up the heel. Find the front prongs of that foot. Put the heel down. Keep the shin moving forward. Shin moving forward. Shin moving forward. Bringing yourself thighs spread apart. But the shins are not only pulling towards each other, but it's also pulling forward. Opposites. Hatha. Different things are happening. Contradicting one another. Keep that playfulness. You could think of it like the, sh le uh, the left shin is moving forward, but the left heel is moving back. Pulling, pulling. Ah. <sighs> One more deep breath. Good. Soft bend and come on up. From the top of the hip, move again. We're going to gently walk, walk, walk. Back to chair. Utkatasana, hands in prayer and sitting down. 
Take your hands to the inner knees, pull those knees apart and squeeze them in at the same time. Squeezing the shins in, but pulling those thighs apart. Five. Four. Three. Two. Beautiful. And up we go. Up we go and reset. Now we're going to move to Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Take your right leg out again. Keep the kneecaps sitting right over those second, third toes. Quadriceps are very active, but again, we're not locking up. Hands out nice and wide here, palms facing down ears aligned with the shoulders, and drop that right knee, bending right over that right ankle. Okay, now imagine that your right heel is moving to the back leg, really turning it on. What do you want right now? What is your mantra for class today? How do you want to feel? Get that mantra in your mind, and when you're ready, keeping your ears completely level, slowly start to turn and look towards that right middle fingernail. Keep dragging that right heel back, lifting up the quads. Five. Two. Here we go. We're going to go to side angle. Find that right leg. Push that leg down, finding a nice long angle here. You could take your hand to the floor. If your block is still there, you could do that, keeping it. And we'll take a long spine here, long spine as we reach. You can feel that leg really turning on. How's that feeling? Really diving in, outer right hip pulling back, right inner knee moving forward. One more deep breath. Beautiful. Take your hand to the sky. Slowly come on up. And from the hip again, close and then open. Second sob. <sighs> okay, here we go. Arms open nice and wide. Get a bend on that left knee now. Right over that second, third toe, you can see your big toe. Both knees are lined up. Arms open nice and wide. What is it you're wanting? What is it you're needing? From the practice, get it in your mind and slowly look at that left middle fingernail. How's that feeling? Okay, side angle, really pressing that right foot down, taking yourself over here. Finding a line of energy, arm up and reach. Deep breaths. Feel that, sh that heel on the left leg pulling back, pulling back, really engaging. Shin moving forward, but left heel pulling back to. <sighs> One more deep breath and beautiful. Up we go. We're going to close that hip. Walk your feet in a little bit, and if it makes any kind of pain in the, the knees, obviously you'll back off. But we're gonna tip ourselves over for Prasarita Padatanasana. Nice, relaxing forward fold. You've got the block there if you want. You could take your head to the top of the block. And again, 
picking up those quads, really feeling yourself picking up and engaging those knees. So this is not just a uh, relaxing pose. This is really dynamic. You're spreading those thighs apart. You're squeezing those shins towards each other. Double check that the outsides of your feet are parallel to the mat so that we're keeping those knees in alignment and we're really pulling up those squats. Engaging lift. Squeezing those shins together and spreading those thighs apart. One more deep breath. And gently, gently, gently come on up. Take your time to walk it in, 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 Good. Okay. And mountain pose. Let's just receive it. Okay, we're gonna head to the floor, okay? And we're gonna play. A Couple of reminders here. Everything has to move from the hip, not the knee. So we want those opening and closing to be from the top of the hip, okay? And we wanna create space behind the leg. So we don't wanna be doing too much of this if your knees bother you. You wanna keep a little bit of a space, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head to the floor and we're gonna take a blanket underneath our head and we're gonna take a block or two in between our legs. I'm gonna use my left leg so you can see it. Nice and comfy here. Nice space here. Okay, so we don't need to bring them so close in that we get crunchy there if that's too much. Back it off a little bit. And then this middle block can be at whatever height you want it to be. We're going to walk that left foot off. So notice that my left foot is all the way off the mat so that when I drop this leg in, it's right in the middle of my mat. The block is there to support it if I need it. Some of you may not need the block, but since we're working on knee intention and integrity, maybe you'll use it today. And we're just going to do that, okay? We're gonna drop it and open it. Now in this position here, notice that the knee is go, stays over that second, third toe because those toes are turned on. So we're just dropping it in and out. Maybe that block can go lower. You could take your arms wherever you want them. Just saying hello hips. Hello, hips. Just open and close. Come back to that breathing into the back body. You're breathing into the mat now, like we did at the beginning. Maybe even splashing the breath up to the ribs. About four more of these open closings. If you're feeling it in the inner knee, you're going to back off. And now we're going to drop it down and place it on that block. You could turn the block up or down. And some of you working a little deeper could take the other leg and use it to weight that down. You decide if that's right for you. Keep those toes turning on. And what's going on here? Lots of space getting created in this hip as you're encouraging that thigh to move away. Close your eyes. 
and see if you can splash the breath into all your tight spots. We'll stay here for another eight breaths. Deep breaths. Okay, slowly come on up. Gently come on up, walking both feet back into the mat back into hip distance apart and then wash it away however you want maybe it's heels to sky maybe it's a happy baby whatever your body wants just pedal it out a little bit all right and let's do the other side taking your right foot walk it off the mat double check that if you drop your knee in towards the midline it's right in line with the tailbone find a block that's level, it works with this leg. It's probably not the same. And we're just gonna open and close, open and close. Double checking that the line of your knee is safe because you got those toes turned on and you're dropping that knee right into the middle of your mat. Just checking in on that body's intelligence, taking the time here to really feel what your body is communicating. About eight more. And now dropping it down to your block, putting the block where you need it. And then again, some of you will take your other leg and just weight it down a little bit. How's this feel? So mindfulness, as you know, is about seeing things as they are and knowing that the way we see them doesn't necessarily mean that's the way it is, right? There are many, 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 many ways of looking at everything. And so mindfulness is sort of stepping out of your story, your narrative, and just seeing broad perspective. So as you're here in the next five breaths or so, mindfully aware of where it feels tight and stiff without getting caught into a story about it. 
Just notice, notice the breath, notice the muscles of your face. Grow those flowers, not the weeds. Focus on the nice, kind parts as well. Alrighty, y'all ready? Okay, here we go. Slowly start to bring up that knee and notice anything about that and walking it into our back neutral and we'll wash it away, whatever that means to you. We're gonna move into Ekapada Kipatasana, which is pigeon pose. Pigeon pose is a lot of folks' favorite pose because there's so much going on. There's a twist, there's a back bend, there's hip openers, lots of good stuff. But it is really tricky on the knee. So I want to play with it here and then we'll turn it over. Some of you who don't do pigeon will do this in class. This is a really nice way to, to practice pigeon without putting a lot of the pressure on the knee. But for those of you who are going to be flipping over, I want to play here. Remember that it all has to happen from that hip and it has to stay second, third toe over that knee. We want to double check that that's happening. So see if you can grab your foot, and if you can't, grab the shin, and maybe some of you will be able to stretch out this opposite leg, the left leg straight, kneecap, and I want you to feel this idea that you're pushing the thigh away. You're not doing it. You're not actually doing anything aggressive here. It's just a little bit of energy that the thigh is moving away, but the shin is moving in, and the second and third toe are nice and open. So keep doing that for a moment. And I'm going to flip over, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So when we come into our pigeon, you're still on your back here. When we're on our pigeon here, what we're trying to get is the shin to move towards us and the thigh to move away. The shin to move towards us and the thigh to move away. That way, the knee is staying with its integrity, just like we've been doing the whole class. Okay? So from our backs, let's go to the other leg here. Take your left leg, come out of that. Take your left leg on the right thigh. So those of you who aren't doing full pigeon, you're going to come back to this in just a moment. And then some of you will be able to straighten that right leg, grab the foot, move the shin towards us, but the thigh away. We're not pushing on that knee. We're pushing away. Oh man, is that yummy, right? And we're keeping the second, third toe over that kneecap. That's the goal, okay? That's what we're trying to find. The shin is moving towards us rather than collapsing through the ankle and losing integrity. Okay, ready? Fancy pants move. Boop. 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 Okay, all right. So everybody teaches this differently. So I'm gonna teach you the way I like to do it. If your hip, we'll take our right leg forward. If your hip is off the mat at all, that means you're putting weight in that knee joint, which is the opposite of what we want to be doing. So you might have a little pillow there for your bottom, okay? I'm actually going to switch legs so you can see better, okay? Now, some of us have the heel coming into the groin, which is completely cool if you want. Working deeper, you'll have a 90 degree angle, just like we did when we were on our backs. You'll be rotating this inner thigh up on the back leg, and we have this really nice 90 degree angle. The toes are turned on, and we're trying to imagine that the shin is moving up and the thigh is moving back. This is all to protect the knee, okay? Sitting up nice and tall, you could use your blocks if you want to. Okay, we're going to be holding here. Imagine that you're pressing the uh, ankle bone that's on the mat towards the ceiling. Imagine that that shin bone is lifting towards the ceiling. It should feel like a space. You got space in that knee. We're here for another eight breaths.
Keep lifting that shin. Thigh is moving away from you, but shin is moving toward. One more deep breath. And very nice. We're slowly going to come up, roll onto that bent knee side, and we're going to bring that other leg forward, and we're going to flip a ruby. Taking that opposite leg back, totally different side, so we have no idea what's going to happen. Maybe you need the pad underneath your bottom. Maybe you are bringing your heel close in. Some of you are challenging yourself to bring it more into a 90 degree angle, okay? And we're trying to lift that ankle bone, lift that shin bone towards the ceiling as the outer thigh moves to the floor. Okay, about 10 to 12 breaths here. Find that action, shin bones moving towards you. Ankle bone is lifting towards you but the thigh bone is moving away. We want to be very careful with our shoulders and knees. Shin bone moving to the ceiling, thigh bone moving to the floor. Toes are fired up towards that kneecap. We care about that knee and we want the hip to be open here, but without torquing the bones of the leg that would put that knee with a lack of integrity. Deep breaths. One more deep breath here and slowly come on up. How was that? Very nice. Roll to that side and we'll bring that leg in front and coming back to just how we started Dandasana where we're sitting up nice and tall. We're heading towards our final pose. So maybe you'll get your blanket ready for your head. Dandasana, nice and fired up. Lift those quads. Feel yourself lifting up. You might even feel that your heels are lifting, but you're not locking through the kneecap. Hands down by your side, sitting up nice and tall. Imagine the feet are pressing into the wall in front of you. Nice and strong here. If we were to flip over, we'd be in downward dog. Five breaths. Shins together, thighs apart. Shins together, thighs apart. Two more deep breaths. Very nice. And when you're ready, gently bringing the knees to bend. Scoot your bottom forward and slowly, slowly, slowly come all the way down. You could take your legs open if you want to, if that feels nice on the knees, keeping those big toes plugged together, or you could put blocks or your foam roller under the knees. And allow yourself to come into a position that feels very relaxing to you.
Allow your body to grow heavy. Allow the muscles around your eyes to soften. The tongue to relax. The muscles around the scalp. feeling completely supported by the floor. Give way, give up, surrender. And turning your inner gaze inward and downward towards your belly. Just watch the breath rise and watch the breath fall. like you're riding on a nice gentle raft. Inhale, we lift up and exhale, we dissolve back. Just a gentle lulling action, inhale. And exhale, dissolve into the exhale. There's no breathing technique, there's no Rhythm you have to stay with. You're just letting it inhale, fill up. And exhale, letting go. Let the legs go, let the feet go, let the arms go. So those of you who are quieting your mind, just watch. I breathe in, breathe in. I breathe out, breathe out. Just watch that with that mantra. Those of you who are working deeper, you are practicing nothing. You're practicing just being. Just being. Letting go now. Letting go. Letting go and enjoy. Stay here for five minutes and enjoy. 